Hey, Pastor Brandon with a Friday afternoon update. Um, and then, then I think we need to have a little chat about something, um, something I've been silent about, and I don't think I can be silent anymore. Um, so the chat or the, the, the update is uh, about Sunday schedule. Sunday schedule is uh, you have an option to worship online like we've been doing, but you also have an option to be here in the sanctuary at 1030. And uh, I'm super excited about that. It'll be good to see you. You may not be able to sit in your pew because we've got some pews marked off um, and I need you to be okay with that. So thank you uh, for your understanding. You don't have to wear a face mask. Face masks are pretty wise. Face masks make your, your neighbor feel more comfortable. We wanna love our neighbor. So I'll be wearing a face mask uh, before the service. Once the service starts, I'll take it off. I'll put it right back on as Mr. Parker Wicker plays the prelude. Um, when the service is over, I love you, but I want you to leave the place. I want you to go outside and I want you to visit until your heart is content uh, out in the courtyard or out in the parking lot and I'll be out there visiting with you, okay? Uh, we won't pass an offering plate. Um, there'll be a plate down front at the table. There'll be plates at the exits. And so you can leave your offering there or you can do the easy thing and go to hopewellpc.org forward slash give and you can set up online giving in just a snap and that'll be easy. And um, so that's, that's that. There are no children's services. There are no Sunday school, um, but children are more than welcome. Uh, they're encouraged as long as you feel comfortable with that. Um, and to make you feel welcome and encouraged to come, Miss Janet and her Smith elves have made up some packages uh, to give you something to do uh, during the service. So moms and dads, if you bring the kiddos, when you arrive over in the side sanctuary will be a table and that table will have um, those, those packets laid out. If you're a regular, it'll have a packet with your name on it, but there'll also be some in case you're not a regular. Moms and dads, listen to me. Don't be giving kiddos a hard time if they start making noise. It's been so quiet in here. I'll be delighted to hear the noises. So lighten up, leave them alone, pay attention to me. If they wanna roam, if they wanna chat, we're gonna be okay with that, okay? So go easy. Um, I think that's enough about that. Sunday, 10.30. Be here if you feel okay with that. If not, we'll see you online. Last thing I want to talk to you about um, is something that's been on my heart and I've been silent. It started without the Ahmad Arbery issue in my beloved Golden Isles of, of coastal Georgia. And just about the time I got my mind right to, to send you an email and my thoughts on that, the issue in Central Park happened. And so I, I kept silent and, and just about the time I got my mind wrapped around that episode, um, the video of George Floyd's death surfaced. And I really don't know what to say. And so I've been silent. But what I began to realize as I, as I thought about it is well, silence is part of the problem, right? It's, it's silence on the part of people who knew, who knew better, that allowed, that allowed the McMichaels to go two months, having hunted down and, and murdered Ahmaud Arbery, two months without justice. It's unthinkable, and yet it happened. It had silence on the part of on officers who were sworn to protect, silence on their part that allowed another officer to spend nine minutes, nine, nine long minutes with his knee on George Floyd's neck as he begged for mercy. Nine minutes. Shouts from those around, but silence on the part of those whose job it was to protect. 
Sadly, the church is, the church has a history of silence on these matters. The truth is in America, we still have a problem, a big problem. Ultimately it's sin, but it's a particular sin of racism. And we don't like to talk about it. We don't like to talk about it at all. Because you and I, we look at, at Gregory McMichael, or Travis McMichael, we look at that police officer, and we see someone who looks a lot like ourselves. And it's frightening. It's frightening to think that someone that looks so much like us could be, could be capable of such evil. And so we make excuses for the behavior, try to impugn the character of the victim. And it just continues. And the church fails time and time again in its, in its role to speak out. So I'm not going to be silent anymore. I still don't know what to say. I still don't know what to do. So I'll start out to my African-American and bro African brothers and sisters with, with what's not enough, but, but with a, a heartfelt apology. An apology for my silence, an apology for what you have experienced and continue to experience. The church can do better, I can do better. And so, I'm gonna try. I need you to be patient with me when I say stupid things. Um, I even need you to call me out when I do, but I ask you to do it in love. To my white people, oh, white people, um, I need you to be careful. I need you to be careful with your words. It's okay, it's okay to not know, to not, to know what to say. It's okay to be horrified by, by what you see. But don't give in to the temptation to explain it away. See, the temptation is to, is to find something wrong with the victim, right? Uh, Ahmaud Arbery was, was casing that joint. Maybe. That doesn't justify being hunted down and murdered. It also doesn't fit the story. It doesn't fit the person of Ahmaud Arbery. Whether or not George Floyd had committed a crime is irrelevant. He is a human, a, an image bearer, who the very system that is designed to protect him didn't, not only didn't protect him, it took his life. Don't try to explain that away. Don't try to make it pretty. Don't look for excuses. Be careful what you say. I also want you to know that I know I've seen many of you be confused by the riots. I'm confused by the riots. I'm confused by the response. But let's be honest, it makes sense that we're confused. Because we may have our problems, but we have not experienced what the African American community has experienced. 
our history does not include our ancestors being rounded up, ripped apart, treated like animals at worst and at best property. Our history doesn't include that. Our history doesn't include being told that, that we're something less than a person. Our history doesn't include being told that we got to drink out of, out of that water fountain, not that water fountain, or we got to ride on the back of the bus or sit at another table. Our history doesn't include that. Our history doesn't include being promised time and time again equal protection and justice only to time and time again turn on the TV and see videos like we saw of Ahmaud Arbery or videos like we saw of George Floyd. So no, you and I, you and I don't understand the rioting. My heart breaks because of it. it breaks at the harm that it's causing for the very ones who are crying out. But don't use that for fodder. Don't use that for an excuse and to minimize what's happened, to minimize their pain. Don't do that. Be okay with not understanding. You don't have the life experiences that allow you to understand that, that anger. I've rambled enough. As I said, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to tell you to do or say. But let's not be silent anymore. Pray for healing. Pray for justice. Amen.